this video, we will be seeing another important topic in the chapter of inverse trigonometric functions. We have already studied some properties in the context of this chapter. This video is dedicated to another property set which will be helping us to solve more numerical problems in an easy and simplified manner. You see I have 6 trigonometric functions, the inverse trigonometric functions written in front of us and it is sin inverse, sin x, cos inverse, cos x and so on. And the answer every time that I have written is what? It is x. Remember the principal value branch video? We understood that sin inverse sin x is equal to x when what happens? When I have the value as the principal branch value that is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 for sin. Similarly for cos we had 0 to pi. Similarly for tan we had some value. Now in this video I am going to tell you what will the value of x exactly be for the condition to get the answer as only x. So let's write and learn side by side. Sin inverse sin x is equal to x for what? For all x belongs to minus 1 to 1. So whenever I have x in the range of minus 1 to 1, I have to simply write sin inverse sin x as the answer is equal to x. Similarly, cos inverse cos is equal to x. For what? For again, for all x belongs to minus 1 to 1. That means whenever I have x in the range of minus 1 to 1 and a question is given to me as say cos inverse cos theta. So the answer is simply theta. Right? What about tan inverse tan x? Tan inverse tan x is equal to x for all x belongs to real numbers. Whenever I have x in the real number category, my answer is simply tan inverse tan x is equal to x. What about cosecant inverse cosecant x? The value for all x belonging to minus infinity to minus 1, minus infinity to minus 1, union 1 to infinity. If this is the case, my answer to cosecant inverse cosecant theta is simply theta. What about cot inverse cot x? Cot follows the same principle as tan. So I have for all x belongs to real numbers again in the case of cot x. Last but not the least secant inverse secant x. Secant and cosecant follow the same principle. So the answer is x for all x belongs to minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity. Keep it in mind that infinity is an unbounded quantity. So you cannot have square brackets in case of infinity and minus infinity. But yes, definitely in case of 1 for secant theta and cosecant theta, my brackets have to be square brackets. They have to be closed brackets. So in this video, what did we see? In this video, we saw that I have certain conditions certain ranges for which my answer is pre-decided. If I know cosecant inverse cosecant x as x in case of minus infinity to minus 1, I would definitely not be having any confusion and simply writing x in my answer. In the next video, we will see some problems based on this concept and the other concepts which we have already studied earlier.